Hey everybody, welcome to the middle of nowhere. Whether you're an experienced PC builder or new to the DIY scene, almost all of us knows heat is both the killer of PC components and it also prevents our PCs from performing at their best. One of the sacrifices people often make when building a budget PC is to simply stick with a stock CPU cooler should the CPU come with one. Regardless if it's Intel or AMD, stock coolers unfortunately aren't always able to keep up with the computing demands being put on the CPU, which can result in higher temps and more noise. Not long ago, I built this budget PC for under $700, and one of the upgrades for the build I had suggested was buying an ex inexpensive CPU cooler. At $18 and change before taxes, I don't think you can get much cheaper than this Thermalrite Assassin X 120R SE. And in today's video, I'm going to compare this cooler specifically to the AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler to see how well the two perform under a CPU intensive workload. Before I get into the testing of each CPU cooler, I thought I'd go over the Thermalrite Assassin X 120R SE. In the box, you get an instruction manual, the Assassin X 120R SE tower cooler, 120 millimeter PWM ARGB fan, a tube of thermal paste, and finally hardware for both AMD and Intel CPUs. As for size, the Thermalrite Assassin X 120R SE is 148mm high, 71mm wide, and 120mm long. Because it's not a giant CPU cooler, it should fit in most cases. The included 120mm PWM ARGB fan has a max speed of 1550 RPMs. It's a fluid dynamic bearing fan and there are 8 LED lights located in the fan's hub. The translucent fan blades should help diffuse the lighting. If you don't want or care about sparkly lights, there is a non-RGB version of this cooler for a dollar less. Aiding in cooling are four heat pipes connected to an aluminum fin stack which is capped with an aesthetically pleasing black plate. As for CPU compatibility, the Assassin X supports AM4 and AM5 CPUs from AMD and and LGA 115X 1200 and 1700 CPUs from Intel. If you're unfamiliar with Thermalrite, they've been around since 2001 and are known for making high quality thermal pads, thermal paste, CPU coolers, both towers like the Assassin X here and the Peerless Assassin, as well as AIO liquid coolers, fans, and even power supplies, the last of which I wasn't even aware of. Installation is pretty straightforward. For AMD CPUs, you'll use the backplate from the motherboard, and for Intel CPUs, you'll use the supplied backplate that comes with the cooler. As I am using a Ryzen 5600G, I'll only grab the AMD parts. Also, you should be able to install the cooler if the motherboard is already installed, but to make things easier, I recommend installing the Assassin X before putting the motherboard into the case. Either way, make sure the motherboard or case is horizontal for easier installation. The first step is to remove the AM4 CPU brackets, which I've already done when I installed the Wraith Stealth. As such, my first step is to remove the stock CPU cooler and also clean up the old thermal paste. To clean both the CPU and cooler, I suggest buying some cheap coffee filters as they do not leave any paper particles behind like paper towels can when wiping away the paste. I also recommend using 99% isopropyl alcohol. This will easily eat through the paste, making it easier to clean and it evaporates quickly. Now that I have the stock cooler removed and the CPU cleaned, the next step is to insert plastic standoffs. After that, find the AM4 metal brackets and screw them into the plastic standoffs and backplate. Once that's done, apply thermal paste using the included tube. Use whatever method you feel best. Next, screw down the cooler tower to the brackets. As far as orientation goes, I have the bottom of the letters to the Thermalrite logo facing towards the RAM. Finally, install the fan onto the cooler using two metal clips. Make sure the front of the fan is facing the RAM, so it pushes air through the cooler from front to back. Also make sure you plug in the PWM and ARGB cables into your motherboard or hub. Now that I've installed the Thermalrite Assassin X, I can test it to see how well it performs against the Wraith Stealth cooler. Before I give the test results, here's the testing methodology I'm using for both coolers. First off, I'm using the stock paste from each cooler. That's the pre-applied paste on the Wraith Stealth and the paste that comes with the Assassin X. I'm doing this as I feel that this best reflects a real world scenario. I realize different thermal pastes perform better or worse when compared, but I want to use what came with each cooler as I feel it keeps things real. The average or new PC builder doesn't necessarily have extra tubes of thermal paste lying around or even thought to get a more competitive brand of paste when initially buying parts, and more than likely they don't do A-B testing with CPU coolers either. However, having said that, let me know in the comments if you think this is a good enough explanation of my mad methods or if you think I should use the same paste for each cooler to eliminate another variable. I'll make a note of your feedback for future videos. To tax the CPU, I'm running the Cinebench R23 multi-core test for 10 minutes, and I'm using CPU ID's hardware monitor to keep track of the package temperatures for each run. I'll run Cinebench three times for each fan setting to take into account any variances as well. To set fan speeds, I'm using the Fan Control app. 
I'll set the CPU and chassis fan speeds to three settings, 50%, 100%, and a linear curve which maxes out at 80%. In an effort to keep the GPU from contributing too much to noise or heat, I won't be screen recording anything during testing. Finally, I'll be using a dB meter app on my phone to measure noise for each testing scenario. Now that I've explained my methods, let me snap my fingers and we'll go into the future where I've completed all the testing. A couple days have passed and I've completed my testing of the two CPU coolers. Starting with idle temperatures, the lowest observed with the Thermalright Assassin X installed measured 7.4 degrees less than the Race Stealth's lowest observed temperature. This difference both impressed and surprised me. On average, the idle temperature range I observed for each cooler was between 30.9 to 33.5 degrees for the Thermalright Assassin X and 37 to 39 degrees for the Wraith Stealth. These measurements were taken while fan speeds were on a linear curve, which I feel is the, probably the most realistic use case. This means fans were spinning between 50% to 55% of their maximum RPMs. Moving on to the test results for each cooler, here are the numbers I recorded and the average difference for each category. Note, the TJ Max or temperature before the 5600G starts the thermal throttle is 95 degrees Celsius. And during my testing, temperatures while using the Race Stealth CPU cooler came within roughly 9 degrees of this mark for the 100% and linear fan speeds, and 4.3 degrees during the 50% fan speed test. This increased heat led to lower scores for the Cinebench R23 benchmark, more than likely because the CPU clock speeds for all cores couldn't maintain their maximum boost frequency. By comparison, the Thermalright Assassin X was able to dissipate heat from the CPU much better, resulting in both markedly lower temperatures and better Cinebench results. During the test, temperatures measured on average between 67.2 degrees at the lowest and 69.6 .6 degrees at the highest. This difference is massive when compared to the temperatures while using Array Stealth. Depending on the fan speeds, the average Cinebench score was between 200 points and 394 points higher when using the Thermalright cooler, versus what was achieved using the Wraith Stealth. While not a massive increase, these scores are still an improvement. Clearly, the Thermalright Assassin X wins the contest of temperatures and benchmarking. But what about noise? For this test, I placed my phone near the keyboard about two feet away from the PC, and I measured the sound output for each fan speed setting. Thankfully, my cats and dog accommodated me by not making much noise in the background, and there were no ambulance or helicopters whizzing by outside to the nearest hospital. My goal here was mostly to see if the two coolers made more, less, or about the same amount of sound compared to each other, while the chassis fans shared their speeds. Having had a chance to reflect on this method, I should have run all case fans at 50% or even 0% if allowed, and then run just the CPU coolers at 50, 80, and 100%, as this probably would have shown a clearer difference between the sound output from each cooler. As it stands, you'll get to hear what all the fans sound like at 50, 80, and 100%, which hopefully still gives you a rough idea of the noise differences. As for my results, I'm going to pretty much call this a tie. The Thermalright Assassin X is about 1 dB quieter on average, but this could be margin of error. I did record each fan scenario with each CPU cooler, so see if you can hear the difference. To say I was surprised at how well the Thermalright CPU cooler performed is an understatement. On average, the 5600G while under load was 19.36 degrees cooler when compared to the Wraith Stealth. The Cinebench results were markedly improved, coming in at 266.45 points higher on average. It's crazy to me that such a budget cooler performed so well. It's also a testament to how poorly the stock coolers like the Wraith Stealth perform. The original Zen and Zen Plus stock CPU coolers were actually pretty good as they had a copper slug in them and were a bit taller, which helped to better dissipate heat than the later, all aluminum, only coolers of Zen 2 and 3 CPUs. Having said that, it's still a good thing lower end CPUs come with a cooler because it's one less component to spend money on and they do keep the CPU from thermal throttling, even if just barely. However, after spending all this time testing, I think buying an inexpensive cooler such as the Thermalright Assassin X 120 RSE is a no brainer. 
For just around 20 bucks, this cooler removes a good deal of heat, allowing the CPU to really stretch its legs and perform better. It also allows overclockers more headroom to play around in an attempt to squeeze even more performance out of the CPU. Sure, this might result in going back to race stealth-like temperatures, but it also means you'll get higher frames, faster renders, and better benchmark scores. Provided the overclock is stable, of course. And this brings me to my conclusion. I set out to make this video to simply see if this inexpensive CPU cooler did a better job cooling the 5600G while producing the same amount or less noise than the stock cooler. Depending on those results, I would then decide on whether or not I'd recommend the Thermalright cooler to you or urge you to stick with your stock cooler. All I can say is the Thermalright Assassin X120 RSE definitely outperforms the race stealth. And noise-wise, the two are fairly close with the Assassin X being barely quieter, according to my flawed testing. Finally, whether you love it or hate it, RGB can add a bit of flair to any PC build, but unfortunately, it usually comes with a significant price increase. Thermalright only increases the cost of adding RGB lighting by $1 with this version of the Assassin X. So if your build is dark and you want to add some light, this CPU cooler will help without blowing up your budget. The Ryzen 5 5600G is a 65 watt TDP CPU, and based off my results, I think the Assassin X should be able to handle nearly any CPU from Intel or AMD rated at 65 watts. I definitely wish I had a more power hungry CPU to test this cooler's limits, but alas, I'll probably have to leave that to a future video. Ultimately, the Thermalright Assassin X is an inexpensive tower cooler, and after spending many hours putting it through its paces, I can definitely recommend it. Should you be building a budget PC, or if you already have a PC and you want to upgrade your existing CPU cooler for not a lot of money, Money, buying this Thermalray offering comes with a lot of positives. It's super affordable, easy to install, and does a better job removing heat than the stock Wraith Stealth. And that's all I have to say about the Thermalray Assassin X 120R SE. It's a low cost, high performing tower cooler that could be right for you. What are your thoughts regarding this component? Have you used it? What CPU did you pair it with? What were your temperatures like, and would you recommend it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, leave a like. Show your support for the channel by getting subscribed and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why not stick around and watch some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.